Hey everybody, it's uh, me, Undead Viking. Um, sorry if I'm not as exuberant as you normally see me when I'm doing these videos. I am uh, fighting a pretty bad case of the flu right now, but you might be asking why am I doing a video. Uh, I'm doing this, and this is going to be kind of a really quick video. It isn't going to be what you're used to as far as uh, my videos. And I know a lot of you are like, thank you, short video. But um, basically, uh, this is a game that is just in its very end uh, of a run at Kickstarter. And uh, I have uh, forged a pretty good friendship uh, with the uh, creator uh, of this game, uh, City Council. Um, really nice guy, Alad Goldstein. And um, and he actually, I've actually like played the prototype of this. For, it's been in development for like two years. And I've, I've, been, I've played it and play tested it, and we've exchanged emails talking about the game. And um, now it's finally, uh, it's, it's, it's met its, it's met its uh, uh, goal. It's going to get published, but... Um, so if you want to get in on the game, uh, you have like 24 hours to do that. And so I apologize um, if you're watching this after that Kickstarter is over, but then at the very least, you know, the game is going to come out, and then you'll be able to purchase it uh, once the game is published. But I am going to do a really brief overview of the rules, um, so you can just kind of see how the game works, and then I'm going to tell you why I like the game and why I find it a lot more uh, different than... There's, a lot of, there's been a few games out there now that are all about city planning and uh, city construction and things like that. And and this game kind of brings something new to the table as far as that's concerned. And so I'm going to tell you what I think, and then we'll go from there. All right, here we go. How to, um, not word for word how to play city council, but uh, pretty quickly just um, how city council is played. To start off, let me just, uh, of course, always say that this is a... Um, a prototype that I was sent, so this does not necessarily represent the uh, final look of the game, though I do think the art is pretty much exactly the same. Obviously, um, it'll look a little bit more professional, and, and uh, there's a couple of typos on here that, um, you know, they'll obviously be fixed in the final uh, final game. Um, scoring track, obvious. You have a couple of tracks down here. The power supply, as you build power plants, you'll increase the power supply. Uh, to the to the city and then you use that power to activate areas on the board that power the, the buildings um, These are as you can see there's these different colors uh, those re represent the different uh, types of, of buildings uh, that you can have um, the gray area in the middle is the starting area um, it's automatically powered uh, and it is and you can put anything you want in there it doesn't matter um, as far as uh, it not uh, matching up as far as the colors go. If you like the green is residential. If you tried to place a blue building green, you can still do it. It just costs you extra money. But um, the game consists of um, some pretty quick phases. Uh, what what happens uh, to begin with is that each person will get uh, some of these favor cards. And favor cards are how you uh, how you how you make points in the game. And, and I'll just and you'll get these as the game progresses. You'll get more and more of these each turn. But like. Um, the game, as you can see, it just it gives you like certain things like uh, financial network demand. And so, if there's a bank, uh, this would be worth one victory point. Um, if there was a bank and a broker, um, then these are the buildings, and then it would be worth two. And then if you turn this card when there's a bank, broker, and the Federal Reserve, it'd be worth three points. So, most of these cards have like something where um, it's worth something uh, at some at, at one point. But like if you hold on to the card and and kind of work towards uh, you know, having the city expand and be better, uh, they'll be worth more. So you kind of have a, a, a way, a risk return, if you will, because sometimes uh, buildings can um, be sold off. And and when they are sold to the, uh, to like basically they're sold off to the private sector, um, then uh, like you can't use them anymore. So then perhaps you wouldn't be able to turn in those cards. And then that is the only way that you can actually score points is, is through turning in your favorite cards. But to get to the point where you actually can score your favorite cards, uh, you have to um, go through the different phases of the game. Um, to begin with, uh, one person is chosen at random uh, to be the, uh, the the election committee, and we'll just go ahead and just make gray. I put three players out here, uh, gray, purple, and blue. And then the election committee, they decide uh, what other people get to be. And different people uh, get different powers. Um, the transport committee uh, gets to... Um, they, they can uh, build two buildings in, instead of just one when you're like, um, or I'm sorry, activate two buildings, not build two buildings. Activate two buildings instead of building one, or activating one. Uh, the Treasury Committee, uh, they get to uh, uh, steal or embezzle money 
Um, and that's not exactly a bad thing um, because basically they can use that money to influence the votes and also to lower the cost of building uh, uh, buildings for the, for the city. So even though it sounds bad, you're embezzling money, it actually really isn't that bad of a thing. Uh, the union committee, uh, they get to keep both cards. Uh, you do get to draw two cards every turn. If you're the union committee, you get to keep both of your cards instead of having to discard one. And if you're in the executive committee, you get an extra delegate, which is what this guy is. Normally you only get one. So when you do your votes, you get to vote twice. So we'll just go ahead and like they picked, somebody's gonna be the union committee and then the transport committee. You know, and so that was. Now if you notice there's an A and a B, the next turn, everybody moves over to B. You're not supposed to switch until you absolutely positively have to switch to your new spot. So what happens is, is that like the, when the election committee goes, the election committee will like say, okay, well, I'm going to move you here. I'm going to move that person there and so on and so forth. And they, they also have to move because you can only stay in the, your role for one turn. So uh, once that is done, uh, that's when you have different buildings that are available to be built every turn. Um, and I'm, not, I'm not bringing all those out to show you, but buildings um, will tell you exactly like what area they're built in, which would be residential. Uh, this is an upgradable building, so like you can upgrade it to it. The cost is two money off of your budget, and then if you actually were to use the building, you see that um, it uses a, a blue collar worker uh, to be the teacher, basically. And then you sacrifice some money and two of your blue collar workers, and that they, you get a white collar worker. So it's like you actually get, you know, you're, you're educating somebody to go up. Um, some things like the wind turbine, you use you just put a blue collar worker to work, and they give you one power. And so if you notice, like at the very beginning, you don't have any power supply because you don't have any power plants yet. So uh, you don't have uh, any power. So you need power plants, obviously, to be built and to be activated, so you can increase the power. So then you can activate the different areas in the board. Um, you can. Uh, each person basically uh, suggests something they want to do. You can suggest to build a building, you can suggest to relocate a building, and you can suggest to sell a building. And then that's when every person then uh, takes one of their delegates, and they 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 because like you'll you'll place like a uh, one of your markers uh, on the building that you want to build. Like if that was the building you wanted to build, you place that on there, and then each person then votes. You can't vote for your own plan. You have to vote for somebody else. And if anybody's the executive committee, they vote again at the very end. So, so that's how you determine um, which plans uh, will uh, actually happen and which plans will be done. So then, after that is done, uh, once the you, then you you enact all the plans. So if you're you know building like you know you'd say okay we're gonna you know we built a playground or you know and uh, we let me find one here that makes sense. Um, uh, let's say a police station. Oh, I should mention too, like anything that is a red uh, location, they can be built anywhere. And so we're gonna build a police station as well. Okay, so, and those are the ones that are built. And then after that's done, um, people then can start activating the building. You notice that there's three buildings here that you just gave, the, the city gives you to start with. Um, later on, um, like two of these can be upgraded and when they're upgraded you just you just put uh, the new upgrade if you do upgrade on top of it like so but um, so then you activate the different spots uh, going in the turn order again because remember this is the turn order first through fifth each person then uh, you know decides okay we're gonna you, you take the workers that you have these are the starting workers that you have you take these workers and you place them on like the white collar guy is gonna go there and you know and so you go and you know it's like okay this is a blue collar worker there and and so on and so forth then you you activate uh the different buildings um like so and then uh once you've placed all your workers in other words you don't have anything left or you, there are times when like you don't have enough buildings <coughs> excuse me to activate all the buildings or enough workers to activate all the buildings or you too have too many buildings and you're not enough and like maybe one of the buildings requires like three workers and you only have two left you'll have ones left in there and this that just happens and um so you then uh process the different buildings so each one gives you something you know so like this one it might be tough to see but you use a blue collar worker and a good 
and it gets you money. So like, and by the way, since those cost three, we would have one, two, three, we would have lowered our budget. So we make a money off of that. We use a blue collar worker there. We get a good and a money. So like we'd have used that good, but we put the good back. And over here, we used a blue collar worker to gain another money. And over here, we use a worker and a money. Uh, and then, you know, so then we would get um, something, uh, uh, a cube in our community level, which is good because that means you're, you're fostering a good community. And um, that's important because you want to have good, a good community area because as you have more crime and more pollution in these two, uh, you need to keep that the lifestyle up. To, you know, I'll show you that in a second. So you process all of those, you get that done with. You then move on to kind of just satisfying everything. Um, you, you go here to workforce housing. If you are at zero, meaning like um, you don't have any workers left, um, you have people move in to the, the location, uh, you know, so you get workers back. You, in the lifestyle indicator, you, you take the number of pollution and criminal uh, cubes that you have, and then you minus the number of community cubes that you have. <coughs> in this case, we would go one this way. So we actually get another blue collar worker because lifestyle is good, people want to move here. And and that would take care of that. Now this is the first turn in the game, so you normally you can't score cards, but this is when you would score your cards and you'd say, okay, look, the city has this, city has that. And then I get points. And so you just add the points or whatever, and you slowly go up. Um, once you get, somebody gets to 11 points, that triggers the end game, you play another round, and then everybody can kind of scramble for the last few points. And, and then whoever has the most points uh, will win the game. So um, it should be noted that like, if you ever, if the city ever gets totally filled with pollution and criminal, uh, criminal activity, uh, the governor will step in and uh, will just shut down your city and, and take it over and everybody will lose the game. So uh, I apologize for the really quick run through, but that's pretty much how city council works. And uh, well, let me tell you exactly what I think. All right, like I said, that was gonna be uh, quick and simple and to the point. So um, there you go, uh, city council. Um, a couple of quick things I just want to talk about what I like about the game. Um, what I like, to when, you, when you make a game that is semi-cooperative, um, that is a really, really difficult thing to do. Um, and I applaud anybody who tries, but a lot of the times it just doesn't work. Um, because you run into situations where uh, people will... And they shouldn't do this. I mean, they should they should play to win the entire game. But um, you run into situations where people, uh, if they're not winning, um, they'll try to either they just don't try as hard, or or they'll just try to bag it. Or you know, the whole thing is that a lot of games and like um, Lord of the Rings, like Nazgul, will come to mind. Um, you have to score points to win the game. Uh, but um, but if you and you have to kind of play for yourself to do that. But if you play for yourself too much, then you lose. And so there's a really, there's a weird fine line you have to walk. And in this one, um, there's a weird fine line you have to walk to make sure that both your cards that you're using and you're, you're scoring your points with um, work for you, but also that uh, um, you're not using, you're not like harming the city in some way to some end where you're actually like in danger of, of getting the city shut down on you. And um, the, the thing about this game that I think is different is uh, that, that makes it uh, competitive and makes it that you can't really have a runaway leader in this game. Um, so you don't have anybody trying to like just tank the game and so they, you know if I can't win nobody else is gonna win. Because of the fact that you have that rule that once you score 11 that's gonna be the final round you know, you're going to play that one final round, and that's and everybody can just do smash and grab and try to turn in as many points as you possibly can to get the win. And um, the, the other thing is, is that it's, it, in my opinion, it's pretty tough um, to, to let the city go into ruin because there's enough cards out there that are actually really helpful um, for uh, the, the game um, that, you know, you, you don't really need to... Uh, rely on on the cards that are, um, you know, negative uh, to to uh, try to win. <coughs> so, 
it's all right. Um, you know, other than that, I mean, there's all kinds of things that I really like about the game. I, I like the whole uh, the proposals. I like the voting. I like the different roles that you play. Um, I like the different, uh, uh, you know, it has all those cool little uh, uh, nuances to the game that, that I enjoy as far as, like, the one person getting to pick what everybody else does and then they get to move people around. And, and so you can kind of mess with people a little bit like that, but you can't do that forever because eventually you have to move. You know, and then you can kind of move yourself to someplace good, but then you're relying on somebody else to kind of, you know, make sure you have a decent uh, job as well and things like that. And um, there's just, you know, I, then the whole idea of, of running a city and things like that. Everybody, I mean, I don't know everybody, but I mean, I've always enjoyed playing games like Sim City and being in charge of something and trying to grow it and sculpt it and whatever. And, uh... And this is another one of those games where it's like really fun to like kind of balance everything. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to you know make money, and that maybe cause more pollution. But you also you know so you, but that's going to employ more workers and so on and so forth. And so you kind of have to balance the good and the bad, and uh, to make sure that you know, your city is productive, even if you're doing some things that are uh, hurting it in the long run. So. There you go. Um, like I said, it's a quick video. I just because I wanted to be a really quick uh, smash and grab kind of type of video, so you can watch it and quickly decide whether or not this is something you want to back. Like I said, there's it's like a day left on the Kickstarter, and um, uh, normally I would have done this a lot sooner, uh, but um, just being sick and everything like that prevented me from getting this up for you. So, uh, Golden Egg Games, like Goldstein, uh, City Council. Uh, if you want a really uh, fun, um, competitive. Uh, 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 like city planning game, like, and I said that's just such a fun theme. Um, I think you know, I, I, I highly recommend uh, going and uh, backing this. So once the game gets published, um, you'll go ahead and be able to have your very own copy on your shelf at that time. All right. Well, thanks for watching. This is Undead Viking. Bye bye.